Okay, so a good while ago my husband and I had been on a quest to watch every animated Disney movie uh, there was at the time and then rank them according to how much we liked them. I had seen all of the Disney movies during my childhood at least once if not 20 times but I had no real recollection of Sleeping Beauty. I have definitely seen it at least once, but I didn't really know what I was supposed to expect. But let me tell you, I didn't expect what I got. So do you remember Sleeping Beauty? Do you remember how insane this movie is? If you like Sleeping Beauty, great, keep doing that, I don't care. <laughs> but let me walk you through my viewing experience, okay? This will be a fun little video to mostly have fun, alright? Let's go! I don't know what I'm doing. So we all know what the premise is and I will not harp on that one. Yes, the curse is needlessly complicated, but it was like that in the original fairy tale and somehow the movie's got a movie. I will, however, question the actions that follow, which were not in the original fairy tale. There the king just destroys all spinning wheels in the kingdom and doesn't care too much that no one can make any close for the next 16 years. But please explain to me the reason behind getting Aurora into hiding for all the years that nothing is foretold to happen and getting her out of hiding right when the curse is supposed to take place. And announce it with a big party. Anyway, I want you to remember this line. I'd like to turn her into a fat old hop toad. Now, dear, that isn't a very nice thing to say. Besides, we can't. You know our magic doesn't work that way. It can only do good, dear, to bring joy and happiness. Good. Good. So, the fairies are taking care of Aurora. How they manage to do that, I don't know. They seem highly unequipped for that. How is it you never cooked or sewed in 16 years? You are supposed to be medieval peasants. I guess magical fairies being magical don't need to eat, but they're supposed to care for a child. How did Aurora survive? On berries? Again, you're supposed to be medieval peasants. You cook pottage all day long. It's the easiest to cook in the whole world of cooking. Honestly though, this scene is fine. <laughs> I don't actually have anything against it. Having seen it all though, I take every opportunity to shit on those fairies that I get. Oh, but then we get to Aurora and the berries she lives on. So Aurora meets Prince Philip and they fall in love via song. Like you do, nothing strange here. But then she's like... Oh no no, I can't, I... Goodbye! But when will I see you again? Oh never! Never! But, like, why? It feels very reminiscent of Cinderella nine years prior. Uh, but then her sudden departure was motivated by magical time limit. Limit. <laughs> what was Aurora's motivation? She didn't need to hurry back to her place. The f fairies didn't want her to. They needed her to be gone. Did she? suddenly remember that she's not supposed to talk to anyone but why then arrange a meeting for that night and also why didn't she tell him her name the fairies gave her a fake name for a reason it would have made no difference to the plot so she goes back home and now we enter the scene where i was seriously beginning to get mad at this movie yes it was that early so Aurora tells her fairies, guess what, I just found a man and now I want to marry him. And they're like, no, you can't, you're already promised to someone because you see, 
in reality you're a princess and this night we're bringing you back to your real family without at least telling her to sit down or something like that just boom that's how it is girl deal with it <laughs> imagine being told that not only are you adopted but you are also the child of your country's president and you're returning to him that very night there are certainly many things that would go through my mind at that point like wow my surrogate family lied to me my entire life what are my parents like we've been apart for so long will i even like them will they like me also i have no social skills whatsoever because up until today i have only talked for three people in my entire life how am i suddenly supposed to fill out an important political and social role and how does Aurora respond? I cannot go. I have a date tonight. And this sentiment continues. She's sad, but not because her whole life is doing a complete 180, but because she cannot marry the man she sang a duet with that one time. You know, Disney, especially early Disney, is getting a lot of flack because they don't have any good female role models or something. I usually don't engage in that because all the discourse around it seems to be solely about if they have a romantic storyline. And that is supremely stupid. Having a relationship or pursuing a relationship is completely unrelated to the topic of being a likable or capable character. It was really weird to me how Merida and Moana were praised as those progressive female characters just on the basis that they don't have romances. Try making the same conclusion for a real person. You miss are a great role model because you are not in a relationship. We want our female characters to have agency and motivation but not to find a life partner. Choose another one. <laughs> However, this, that right there in Sleeping Beauty, to me is the most sexist Disney ever Disneyed. The fact that this massive disruption in Aurora's life is only ever discussed in relation to her love life. Her whole identity completely vanishes behind her connection to Philip. Anyway, next scene. We briefly see the kings being happy that they can finally marry off their children. Because King Stefan too is all consumed by his daughter's love life. And not at all worried by the fact that they basically don't know each other. And also they throw a massive party for her return, with firework and all the people! For someone who, in effect, lived in solitary confinement for all her life. That's not going to overwhelm her. That's a, a very good idea. Fun fact! Or fact. That was the moment when I took a page out of those guys' book and got myself some wine. I had to! This movie made me drink, because all of the characters are garbage people. Except for Philip, he's fine. Speaking of Philip, in between all of this, he winds up in Maleficent cell and there another bizarre scene occurs. It goes something like this. Hello, my boy, let me explain the plot to you. Here is what will happen now. Everything clear? Good. Bye. I mean, that might as well happen in this movie. So, the inevitable happens. Spindle, sleep, oh no, fairies fucked up. And then, to cover up the fact that they fucked up, they just decided to put a sleeping curse on everyone, without anyone's consent. And remember, they didn't yet know how to fix this mess. It's not like they wanted to put them to sleep for just a couple of hours. It was pure coincidence that they learned about Prince Philip. 
So how long were they planning on keeping all those visitors away from their families? And the work they had to do? And the livestock they had to feed? But at least the fairies don't get yelled at! Is it already clear that the fairies are the most garbage people of all of the garbage people in this movie? Whatever, moving on, a battle of great importance. Fairy murders Maleficent's raven and she turns him to stone. He's dead. Hey, remember the line from the beginning I told you to remember? You know our magic doesn't work that way. It can only do good, dear, to bring joy and happiness. Aha. Uh -huh. In the end, everyone is awake and happy. Aurora is as unconcerned with her new family as she always was and dances with her prince into clouds, I guess. The end. In conclusion, as bad as this all was, at least it was a dinosaur. Do you remember Dinosaur? My hair is a choice today. I usually don't engage in that because... because I forgot my line. Ah, 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 nose. It's itchy. Ah, yes, I have also sneaky coffee. Not so sneaky anymore, now that I've told you, but... So, the inevitable happens. Uh, what is the inevitable? 